Plastic is everywhere and we're told to avoid it entirely if we're to be good environmentalists, right? But what if I told you that avoiding plastic is much harder than you thought? Yeah, we all think about single-use grocery bags, single-use plastic water bottles, but plastic is everywhere in our everyday items. Here are some items that contain hidden plastic. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all sorts of things, zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. And today, we're talking about 20 plus items that actually contain plastic that you probably can't avoid. That being said, this is not a list of items you should avoid at all costs. This is just an educational video to show you that these items do contain plastic, whether you have to use them or you can cut them out or anything in between. But where possible, I will be sharing some plastic free alternatives, so keep that in mind. The point is, is don't sweat it if you use any of these items. I use plenty of these items myself. This post is not to shame anybody, but just to educate to show you that plastic is everywhere and even the most perfect environmentalists can't avoid 100% of plastic. Before we get into it, I might talk a little bit too fast for you and that's just who I am. Sorry, you can change the speed of the video using the gear icon right down here. First is dental floss. Not only does it contain plastic, but it is basically entirely plastic. And it is actually made from nylon or Teflon and I just learned how toxic Teflon actually is. I've always heard that it was bad, but I didn't know like factually why. Teflon has many risks to include certain cancers, reproductive issues, and high cholesterol. So this is another perk to avoiding plastic is you can avoid these toxic substances. There are actually many forms of plastic plastic that are quite toxic and if you want me to make a full video on that, let me know. Some plastic free alternatives to floss are compostable floss made from silk or bioplastic or even go flossless and use a water pick. Now, none of these are perfect when it comes to an environmental footprint, but these are plastic free and of course, less toxic to you as well. Next is chewing gum. And while this might come as a surprise to you as it did for me, it actually makes a lot of sense, right? When you're chewing a piece of gum and it doesn't dissolve, it has to be made out of something non-dissolvable and that is plastic. And I used to spit my gum on this ground all the time as a kid because I thought it would decompose. It goes in my mouth. Of course it's compostable. No. So it's usually listed as a gum base and most gum contains polyvinyl acetate, which helps it keep its shape. So you're literally chewing mint flavored plastic. And of course the packaging is almost always plastic too. So it's a double whammy when it comes to plastic. Here are some popular plastic free brands, not only plastic free in their packaging, but plastic free in the ingredients as well. Those are Pure, Geo Organics, Humble Co, and Simply Gum. I've even seen many of these brands available at grocery stores like Sprouts and Natural Grocers, so see if you have any local to you. What if I told you that every time you drive, you're emitting microplastics? Because yes, your car tires contain plastic. Therefore, this can't even be avoided if you ride share, take public transportation, carpool, or even ride your bike. You might be thinking, aren't tires made out of rubber? Yes but rubber is not as natural as it used to be. There is still natural rubber in tires, but a lot of it these days is synthetic due to cost and also how fast and how aggressive we drive our cars these days. If we were to use natural rubber in our car tires, they would essentially fall apart within a few uses. I couldn't find any good sources saying like just how long or how far it would take for natural rubber tires to completely disintegrate, but it's pretty quick and it's just not economical to replace your tires that often. As we will see throughout this post, there's a lot of reason why we use plastic these days. It makes a lot of sense when it comes to money, honestly, sustainability. I'm just saying that it's more sustainable to use one set of plastic based tires than it is to use dozens of sets of natural tires, in my opinion, as well as because of how many tires we use, which is 2.3 billion tires every year. We, there's just not that much natural rubber for that standard. Fun fact, big tire is actually responsible for the downfall of public transportation. Learn more about that in this video, as well as the famous Michelin star guide, you know, the guide that tells you the best restaurants that is in fact Michelin tire, the Michelin man. The Michelin man created the Michelin guide to sell more tires. That is fact. That is not conspiracy. And I wrote a full blog post on it. You can check it out down below. Another plastic that is everywhere is polyester and polyester is clothing. It is thread. It is yarn. It is other fabrics. It is blankets. It is towels. It is everywhere polyester. And again, it makes sense. We have many, many people on this planet that we have to clothe and keep warm. And it just makes the most sense money wise, resource wise, time wise to use it out of a byproduct that comes from the oil industry. So your best option here is to switch to an all natural wardrobe, things like linen, cotton, tinsel, hemp, etc. But that's not very feasible for everybody because that can get expensive really quickly. Sure, you can thrift natural materials too, but when I go thrifting, I'm not looking at clothing tags to see what clothing is made out of bonus points if it is made out of natural materials. But for me, when I'm shopping for clothes, I prioritize based off of look, fit and feel not based off what it's made out of. And there are plenty of eco brands that I recommend that make stuff out of natural materials, such as Tentree, Darn Tough and more. Or you could also stick with polyester because polyester has its place when it comes to swimwear, workout wear, etc. So instead of supporting the creation of new polyester, you can support recycled polyester from brands like Girlfriend Collective. A pretty obvious one, but I wanted to include it in this list anyway, is tape. Every time you send a package or tape something on something, 
it's most likely made out of plastic. And while this might be an obvious plastic containing item, I don't think a lot of people think of this as something that they should swap out when they're trying to live zero waste. But if you are trying to swap this out, you can opt for washi tape or paper-based tape. One that absolutely shocked me about two years ago, I went to a film festival and I got one of those little bracelets. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna put this into the recycling bin. But what is this actually made out of? There's no way it's made out of paper. I can't tear it and it's waterproof. That is because yes, festival bracelets are made out of plastics. They're actually made out of a material called Tyvek, which is 100% plastic, but it's woven in a way to mimic paper. It gives the feel of paper and is much more durable. I understand the point of this material. It's tear resistant, it's water resistant. It lasts as long as possible instead of having to get replacement bracelets every time it gets wet. But this means they are not recyclable and they're quite pollutive to create and dispose of. And unfortunately, there's really no avoiding this. If a venue requires you to use a bracelet, you have to use a bracelet if you want to have entry, especially if you already paid for your ticket. I guess you can avoid this by going to no more festivals, no more parties, no more events, but what fun is that? So my suggestion here is to cut it off and keep it, put it in some sort of scrapbook, memory book, shadow box, keep that memory instead of putting it in the landfill. This next one makes me so mad and that is bioplastics. Theoretically, bioplastics should be made of 100% plants but that is not the case. Many bioplastics are made from plant-based plastic and oil-based plastic because it's very difficult to recycle these plastics and they're not compostable. According to Beyond Plastic, only 1% of plastic on the market is even bioplastic at all. One example I have, actually two examples. The first one is a lot of like compostable dog poop bags are actually oil-based plastic that are, that have like special microbes and little, that help it break down faster, not fully. And then another option is Everly candle refills. I love Everly, but their packaging is only like 70% bioplastic and the other 30% is oil-based plastic, meaning only 70% of it decomposes. And even very difficult for these things to be broken down in a commercial compost, if at all. And this also puts the burden of composting on the consumer. You're supposed to be responsible for looking at the composition of that packaging and seeing, can I put it in my commercial compost? Can I put it in my home compost or should I landfill it? Brands really won't disclose that. And that makes it even more frustrating. If you want plastic in your tea, make your tea in a tea bag. Yes, tea bags are made out of plastic. Typically, they're actually made from natural abaca grown in the Philippines or Ecuador, according to Tea Journey, but they are usually sealed or lined with plastic. And not every brand contains plastic either, but more often than not, at least the big brands you will find at the grocery store will contain some plastic. And this leads to the release of microplastics billions of microplastics right into your cup of tea. So opt for loose leaf tea and steep it inside of like a little metal ball or metal strainer to avoid any plastic at all in your tea. And bonus points if you can get your tea at a bulk store package free. This next one might be common sense to you and maybe it is to me now as an adult, but when I was in high school, I did not quite wrap my mind around the fact that glitter was made out of plastic. In fact, glitter is plastic. Um, so when you put glitter on something and then you wear it anywhere, it's going to shed that glitter, which is terrible for the environment. I've shared this story before, but I will share it again. My greatest environmental sin. <laughs> when I was in high school, I wanted to wear Crocs to prom, but I didn't want to just wear any Crocs. And I didn't want to pay expensive money for Crocs because I was in high school. But I thought I'll get some cheap knockoff Crocs. I'll tape my cheap glitter and I'll glitter my own Crocs, except for I didn't want to make a mess inside. So I did it outside all of that glitter right into the environment. And then I wore them. I wore them for a whole year. I wore them to prom, I wore them to my wedding. It was iconic, I'm not gonna lie. And I know my one individual action, like that's not, that's not destroying the planet, but it does have an impact and I regret it every single day. So anyway, what you can do here to avoid glitter is just stop using glitter. There are plenty of ways to have fun for your crafts, for your art without using glitter. I have personally stopped using glitter over the last seven years, so it is possible. Tampons and pads contain plastic. Again, you might be thinking, duh, of course, the wrappers, the applicators, it's all made out of plastic. That's not what I mean. The actual tampon, the string, the actual pad, made out of plastic, at least partially. I dove into period care fully in this video last week. We talked about how toxic many of our period products are and which ones are the best for our body and the planet, so check that out. But yes, there are plastic in all of our disposable period products. It makes sense in pads to an extent. The sticky part is synthetic as well as they want that bottom side to be waterproof so that it doesn't leak. So there are some reasons here for it being plastic. So in short, reusables are the way to go and there are plenty of options that are safe for you and safe for the planet to include period underwear from brands like Mati Body, Wuka, Salt, Tomboy X, Period Company, and more, as well as menstrual cups and menstrual discs. My favorite brand is Salt. And you can also opt for applicator and truly plastic free tampons from brands like Dame and NatraCare. Similarly, your wet wipes contain plastic as well. And yes, your flushable wipes also contain plastic, but other things like baby wipes, makeup remover wipes, Clorox wipes, cleaning wipes, they all contain plastic. And that's exactly why you should not be flushing them. They will not break down in our septic systems. 
This type of plastic is made from petrochemicals or modified cellulose like rayon or viscose, which is woven so finely that it can even feel like fabric. But as we learned above, it is very common to make fabric out of plastic. What can you do instead? Ditch them. There are plenty of swaps for all these things that I listed. You can use reusable makeup remover pads and, you know, just a liquid makeup remover. You can offer bioplastic. Again, brands like NatraCare make bioplastic wipes, particularly for things like babies. You can use reusable wet wipes for things like babies. You can just use a rag to clean instead of Clorox wipes. There are so many ways to ditch the wipes to save money and save the planet. This one's shocking. This one's actually distressing even. You can't even avoid plastic when you're shopping canned goods. Many of the things that we buy in cans are acidic to some level. And guess what doesn't react well with acid? Metal. If we put all of that, you know, soda, or tomatoes right into an empty metal can, it will wither away in just a couple of days, maybe weeks, maybe months at the best, but we wouldn't have the shelf life of our canned goods without plastic linings. Now, what did they do before plastic was invented? I think that the cans just didn't have as long of a shelf life and they also used glass a lot more than they do now. Many of them are BPA free. I'm sure you see that on a lot of cans like BPA free lining, which is great because BPA is also very bad for our health and planet. So it's a step in the right direction. But again, this truly makes plastic unavoidable. Best thing I suggest you do is head to your local bulk store, get all of your dry goods in bulk, things like beans, quinoa, rice, whatever you might be buying in cans and then go to your local farmer's market to get plastic-free produce. But going to a farmer's market in a bulk store comes with extreme privilege. And I know not everybody can do this, so do what you can. For me, I'm gonna keep buying canned goods. They're still recyclable, which is great news. When they are recycled, that plastic lining is separated somehow. I don't know how they're separating it and is removed. That plastic part's not recycled, so that sucks. But the metal can is recycled. My assumption why I see cigarette butts on the ground all the time is that smokers don't see them as litter because they're made out of paper. But what if I told you that those cigarette butts contain a plastic filter? In fact, 98% of that cigarette butt, that cigarette filter, is plastic. So it's long-term litter that will never decompose and break down into microplastics. Just another reason to quit smoking. This next one is a little bit funny and that is that some country's money is actually made out of plastic. It's extremely durable. I'm sure you've gotten that throughout this entire video. Plastic is durable, it is sanitary, it has its place. Now the US dollar, you've probably seen a torn one, it tears a lot and that is because it is 75% cotton and 25% linen. Yay, the government's doing something eco-friendly for once. But there are a few countries in the world that use plastic money to include Canada, England, and Mexico. Wrapping paper is very popularly made out of plastic, at least partially, and I talk about this every single holiday season. How can you tell if it contains plastic? Let me play you a video from the holiday season. It's 100% plastic, it will crinkle and then bounce back close to its original form just like this. If your wrapping paper is a paper plastic combo, it may feel a bit like paper, but it will be kind of slippery and shiny like a receipt or have obvious signs of glitter like this bag and other plastic pieces. Now, if it's 100% paper like my favorite brand from Rappoli, it will have a more rough texture like newspaper and stay in a ball like this when it's crumpled. I encourage you to use your old recycling paper. You already bought it. You might as well use it or at least give it to someone like a neighbor or a friend. And when you do run out, opt for something plastic free. My favorite brand that you can buy that's very, very fun colors and fun prints is Rappoli, or you can just head to your local office, your office supply store, your local craft store, and find anything made out of solid paper, such as brown craft paper, you can upcycle newspapers, and so forth. Many of the sponges that you're using to wash your body in the shower or wash your dishes in the sink are made out of plastic, which is funny because the name sponge comes from the animal that lives in the ocean that we traditionally used. We would dry it, reuse it as a sponge, um, but now it's made out of plastic. This means that it has the potential to release microplastics every time you use it and it cannot be recycled or composted. Some better options are bioplastic sponges, natural loofahs, natural sponges. You can even grow your own loofahs yourself. Or you can opt for a wooden or bamboo scrub brush. There are plenty of options on brands like Earth Hero, Zero Waste Store, Ecoternatives that you can check out below. Remember how I hinted at that you can't always shop plastic free at your grocery store in the produce section? That's because produce stickers are made out of plastic. Now we do get bananas with, with paper stickers on them and I know that they're paper because if they do get wet, they like dissolve right off. The adhesive that sticks onto the fruit, most likely synthetic. That means that even the most perfect zero waser who's buying apples plastic free still gets some plastic on that fruit that cannot be recycled. What can you do? Not much. You can pick through and find the rare fruit that doesn't have a sticker on it, but that's a lot of time wasted. But I think honestly, the best way to shop plastic free and the most in season and the most delicious and probably the most affordable is to head your local farmer's market if you have one, if you have the time to do so. Or I guess if you want to go all out, start a garden and grow your own produce. If you didn't know, bandages are also made from plastic. And I get why plastic is so prevalent in the medical field. It's sterile, it's affordable, and it makes sense. I'm not saying to stop bandages, but it's just something to keep in mind. I think it's also important to be mindful about bandage use. What I mean is, do you really need a bandage for that injury? If so, that's fine, but the next step is to choose the right size and shape. 
Picking a bandage that fits the body area the best will limit how often you have to replace it and therefore reduce your bandage consumption. Now, if you're looking for an option, especially if you have kids and they love to go through bandages, I know how kids are, I highly recommend Patch. They are made from bamboo. They're not the most durable, they're not the most waterproof, but they are eco-friendly. One that shocked me was nail polish. I don't wear it a whole lot, but when I do, I always think about this. Some but not all nail polish ingredients are either made from plastic or made from fossil fuel byproducts. These polymers may not be plastic in the sense that we think of plastic, but anything coming from the fossil fuel industry is pollutive and will not decompose. Now, you don't have to give up your nail polish if you enjoy it. In fact, you don't even have to switch brands or anything if you don't want to. I'm a strong proponent in that you shouldn't give up every single thing that you enjoy for the sake of the planet. Keep that joy in your life and find other areas in your life. Make changes. And I talk more about that in this video. But if you like doing your nails at home every now and then like me, opt for an eco-friendly brand such as Be Kind, Kappa Nui Nails, and Habit Cosmetics. Next is a product that I can talk on and on and on about, and that is drink cartons or Tetra Pak. They are the same thing. Some brands will say, we don't use Tetra Pak, we use carton board. They're the same thing. It's like Kleenex versus tissue. Tetra Pak is just the brand name. Now, Tetra Pak does reduce plastic consumption, but it still contains plastic. It is a combination of paper, metal, and plastic. Think about it. If you put milk in a paper box, it would leak everywhere. It needs plastic to hold it in. This is the same for ice cream cartons, coffee cups, and more. And yes, it is recyclable sometimes. It really is growing in popularity to recycle cartons, which is great news, but it's not available everywhere. So check your rules before recycling this item and never trust a brand that says our cartons are recyclable. It might not be in your area. That's greenwashing. Now, regardless, it's still harmful to create this plastic and cartons are not actually recycled. They are downcycled. And if I have more cards, you can check out this video up here talking about what downcycling is. Cartons have their place. It does reduce the environmental impact because it is less plastic. But for me, the decision comes if I have carton recycling. But if we move and we have carton recycling, I'm probably more likely to choose a carton because it is a less environmental footprint. Next is receipts. Technically, they are made out of paper, but they have a plastic coating on them. And not just any plastic coating, a BPA or BPS plastic coating, which is very, very toxic, which is so upsetting. Now, why are receipts covered in this harmful plastic? Because it's thermal. When receipts are printed, it prints using heat. So if it was just 100% paper, it'll probably burn up. Not great. So it is printed with BPA. And I think BPA is probably chosen because it's probably heat resistant. Thankfully, we're moving to a more digital world where it is more common than not to get a texted receipt, an emailed receipt, or even just no receipt. Unfortunately, some establishments like the park that I'm volunteering at, Voyagers National Park, print the receipt no matter what. There's no option to deny that receipt, which really sucks. It's such a waste of resources and I have to touch it every single time. So when you can, opt for digital or no receipt. Do you know that some paints contain plastic? Acrylic paint to be precise. Again, not in the same way that a plastic water bottle is plastic, but rather a plastic-like polymer. It's still made from oil, it's still toxic, and it still doesn't decompose. In fact, when you're washing your dirty paint water, acrylic paint water down the drain, that is bad. <laughs> so what can you do? I don't know. And this isn't just paint for art. This is also painting your walls, painting your exterior, etc. Some brands you can opt for if you're looking to paint, Natural Earth Paint and Ecos Paints. Ecos Paints is particularly for houses. I can't believe I saved this one for the end. Something that I talk about a lot is laundry sheets. Again, it's not plastic in the way that a disposable water bottle is plastic. It is a plastic-like polymer, but once again, it is polluted to create and it does not decompose unless under very specific circumstances, which not everybody has. When I live in a big city, I'm more okay using laundry sheets because it's more likely to break down. But up here, I'm literally living in the middle of the woods. I have a septic system. I really doubt they're adding any special microbes to break down PVA. I'm not gonna use it here. So what you can do is call your sewer company to see if they have the capabilities to break down PVA. PVA is very popular, and so chances are that big cities are equipped to handle it properly. PVA is polyvinyl alcohol, by the way. Or you can just opt for PVA-free laundry detergent, such as the Eco Egg or my favorite powder from Meliora. Similarly, and lastly for today, is dryer sheets. An item that I haven't bought for years, thanks to dryer balls, are designed to be used once and replaced, making this a very sneaky single-use plastic. But switch to dryer balls as a solution here. They last for years and save you so much money. Plus, if you get ones made out of wool, they're fully compostable when they're done. All right, we made it. That was a lot of items. I think we're around 25 items that contain hidden plastic, but there are more. I already have a list of at least five more going, and I'm sure I'll think of more. Leave your items down below of items that contain hidden plastic. Once again, you don't have to fully avoid these items if you don't want to or you can't. Instead, make the swaps where possible and just be mindful that plastic is everywhere. Some plastic is necessary, some is not, but really there's no avoiding plastic. Even the most perfect zero wasters still use plastic. So if you use plastic, don't sweat it. You're still part of the zero waste community if you want to be. You're still eco-friendly. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I know this video got a little bit long, so thanks for sticking with me. I will see you in the next video though, but until then, remember that you're smart actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. As well as the famous, famous? Honestly, yeah, I'm vibing with the hair. I just dyed it yesterday and I didn't love it at first, as happens every single time that I dye my hair.